welcome to the ATCM channel. Today we are going to discuss a case of uh, atrial fibrillation. Okay. Shall we start? Yes. Uh, a 62 year old male presented to the ER with complaints of fever and cough with expectoration. Mm. On initial 10 second assessment, patient was able to talk in one full sentence and he is looking normal color, no paler and uh, he is uh, conscious and oriented. Mm. So we connected him to the monitors and we started with the primary survey. Mm. In the primary survey with the airway, the patient was talking in one full sentence. There were no gurgling, no strider and no any abnormal sound. So, uh, airway is patent and second coming to the breathing. Breathing respiratory rate was 20 per minute and saturation was 96% on room air. Bilaterally chest was having equal raise and fall in the chest. And then coming to the circulation, in the circulation part the patient's pulse rate was 120 per minute and BP was 160 by 90 and uh, uh, cardiac monitor showing uh, uh, like Cardiac monitor was showing uh, absent P waves with uh, irregularly regular uh, uh, waves, ma'am. The pulse was irregularly irregular, ma'am. Mm. At this point, we have got uh, taken ECG, mm. and uh, there's this patient was uh, having uh, irregularly irregular rate mm. and uh, absent P waves and uh, narrow QRS uh, complexes. We diagnosed it as AF, having with uh, AF fast with ventricular rate as okay. the. So, um, AF with fast one. So, first of all, to diagnose AF, what uh, in the ECG, what all changes should be there? Absent P waves. Okay, absent P waves. P -waves. Ah, then? Absent P waves and irregular RR interval. Ah, okay. RR irregular. Then? And narrow complex QR, narrow QRS complex. It can be narrow or wide, depending on the condition. Yes. Mostly it will be narrow. narrow. And uh, one thing that that we should follow is that we need to take an ECG. How much second is this ECG? Four, it will be uh, uh, the ECG speed is 25 mm per second, second. right? So it is mostly a 10 second so ECG. ECG. Ten we need at least a 30 second ECG to yeah. confirm this, and we need to, then only we can tell this patient's having AF. Okay, yeah. and uh, AF it is why is it is irregular? Mal because the atrial rhythms are irregularly coming, it, like fibrillatory yeah, waves yes. are coming. So, in between only the ventricle will take up this rate. Yeah. So, it's irregular with absent P wave mm. and narrow, mostly mm. narrow. So, this patient is having AF with the fast ventricular, ventricular rate. rate. Okay, rate Why you call it as fast ventricular rate? Ventricle this rate is, the QRS rate is high, the RR. Okay, RR enroll rate is high. Okay, suppose we have a patient, okay. Uh, how, uh, uh, we have this value right here. If at all we are not having the value here, mm -hmm. how will we know the rate in a patient who uh, with AF, how will we know the rate? Usually we find the heart rate, uh, how 300 divided by... So, number of big squares, big squares between, between two RR. RR. Okay. Here we take an average mm -hmm. of uh, nah. uh, like a strip of 10 RR intervals to oh. see how much it is. Ah, either we can, uh, uh, the easy method is we can see number of QRS complexes okay. seen in the lead to two of 10 second rhythm strip. Okay. A 10 second strip of an ECG mm -hmm. and in that how much is there here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 24 okay, into 6, six. this 10 seconds ten so seven. to know for 1 minute it will be 24 into 6 it is mostly coming as 120 but we are not sure because this part we yes. didn't cover okay so so we we found the rate for an irregular rhythm based on the uh, RR uh, based on the QRS complex. Okay. Mm. Otherwise, if it was regular, we would have used this formula. Since it is irregular, we used this formula. Mm. Okay. So AF is there fast ventricular rate. So what is the normal ventricular rate? Uh, normal ventricular rate we take till 120. Uh, normally in AF yes. we consider up to 120 as the AF with the controlled Control ventricular rate. rate. Okay. So different AFs are there. Yeah. AF with okay. Okay. AF is there with controlled ventricular rate. Okay. That is up to 120. 
ഓക്കെ പിന്നെ ഫിഫ്ത് ഫാസ്റ്റ് വൺ ഡിക്ലെയർ ചെയ്തു സർ ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ് വിൽ ബി മോർ ദാൻ 120 ടു 170 ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ഇൻ സം കണ്ടീഷൻസ് എ എഫ് വിൽ ബി ബ്രോഡ് കോംപ്ലക്സ് that condition is if there is any accessory pathways like wpw syndrome that delta wave these components also will come into play so it will be broad complex so here the treatment is with what plicanide plicanide okay and another one is af with slow and regular rate and if there is a patient is there any condition where the af can be regular if the patient is having af along with complete heart block okay a the rr will be regular okay okay regular okay so these are the types of other. so based on the rate we can tell like that okay so if this patient is having af uh, so what can be the cause of af in this patient he the came with history of fever and cough lrti history ah okay uh, is he a known case of af he was actually in the second ah okay 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 and right okay. now because in the primary survey we found this as a narrow complex as uh, <coughs> narrow complex uh, tachyarrhythmia uh-huh. we went with the acls uh, algorithm of uh, uh-huh. adult tachycardia with uh, adult tachycardia ma'am uh-huh. as uh, this patient as of now he is uh, having tachycardia uh-huh. and uh, we checked for the five signs of uh, whether he is having any hypotension if he is having altered mental state so before strategy. going into that we need to uh, check the Primary identify survey. the uh, underlying cause okay. identify and treat the underlying okay. cause so first we will have to do the airway okay. breathing okay. circulation okay. then iv cannula should be taken 12 edcg okay. 12 edcg we have taken okay, okay. so is there any cause underlying cause for the cf right we, now some sort of uh, fever with uh, cough with expectoration ls expectoration having so we are considering some kind of an LRT. lung infection lrt so otherwise if patient is coming with some atypical symptoms mm-hmm. and if you are finding as af can it be because of something else what are the causes of af cause of af it can be like uh, anything which causes their atrial enlargement uh, previous it can be cardiac and non cardiac and non cardiac okay cardiac causes what what are the cardiac causes any ischemic changes previously ah uh. Uh, not previously not previously recently ah recently recently, recently any ischemic changes. changes then any cardiomyopathy okay uh, that is structural structural, structural problems problem. like cardiomyopathy mm. then any valve problems like asd then heart failure heart failure congestive heart, heart failure, failure. then some post procedure iatrogenic iatrogenic sir some post procedures like any surgeries or any ablation or something okay okay then infections like myocarditis these things infection okay now other causes non cardiac causes non cardiac causes it can be like uh, one can uh, infections uh, ah, okay infection then a thyrotoxicosis ah thyrotoxicosis okay. hyperthyroidism okay hyperthyroidism then and then uh, pulmonary embolism pulmonary embolism mm. and then uh, alcohol binge syndrome ah what is that called holiday heart holiday syndrome. heart syndrome alcohol because of alcohol, alcohol binge then yeah. because of some any other iatrogenic causes for af some patients comes with something we give something the patient will go and af COPD patients, if you are giving bronchodilators, beta agonist, beta these agonist. things can cause. Then COPD patients itself can go into AF, AF mm? corporal yeah. manual, these corporal complications. Manual. Okay. So, uh, this is AF. So, we have one patient with a, uh, uh, tachy, uh, tachy, this thing. So, uh, tachy arrhythmia is there. Heart rate is more than 150. So, we need to find the underlying cause. Okay. Then what did you do? And then we checked for the signs uh, of hypotension as is not in his, his bp was uh, 160 by 90 mm oh. and is not his conscious oriented and there no signs of any shock mm. and there is uh, the ecg leads showing only tachycardia with absent p waves okay and uh, we ch- we have to check for next the qrs how much is the width mm. as it's a narrow qrs width mm. we had to go with uh, wegelman or adenosine or with beta blocker mm. in this case uh, 
we had first so this patient is going into this, this part, part of the yeah. algorithm okay before that so suppose this uh, this patient doesn't have hypotension uh, what was the presenting complaints fever and cough fever and, and cough. cough no chest pain yeah. no breathlessness yes, yes. nothing was there yes, yes. suppose this patient had one of these mm. what we will do if any one of these signs are present then we need to immediately have a synchronized cardio version to be done okay okay so what is the dose synchronous for synchronous cardio version first uh, we start with 6 uh, 6 uh, uh, hmm? synchronous cardio version if we are planning to do first we will have to take concern we will have to sedate the patient Listen. then we will have to depending on what kind of tachyarrhythmia yeah. patient is having we will have to plan so yeah. if it is a we will have to give at least um, 100 to 120 joules we will have to give synchronous cardio yeah. version yeah. should be done yeah. okay so uh, sub, uh, so all unstable uh, tachyarrhythmia will be you do synchronized cardio version before doing synchronized cardio version will you uh, do something or is there any contraindication for synchronized cardio version uh consent and like sedating them so that the show okay uh, usually we tell that all unstable patient should be uh, synchronized It's cardio version should be done but in some uh, conditions we will have to check whether there is in some contraindications mm -hmm. like some contraindications can be uh, so patient is having af our patient is having af mm -hmm. so especially in af patients we will have to look for contraindication mm -hmm. because suppose it is a valvular af what will be there there can be this emboli uh, there can be a clot, clot. so uh, after cardio version the clot can get dislodged oh, so okay so uh, a valvular af is a uh, contraindication okay. then af along with you told no stroke stroke a f along with stroke. stroke so af okay that is there then af with the high chart work score high chart work yes, score no. okay then uh, then af lasting for more mm -hmm. than 48 hours okay. okay in such patients we will have to anticoagulate them and then mm -hmm. only we will have to do so, uh, synchronized so uh, cardio cardio version cardio version, so. cardio version um, uh, can be which all cardio versions are there pharmacological is there electrical, electrical. source Right. So this patient, what we did, this patient, uh, you were planning to do the this thing, uh, as medical, medical cardio version. Ah. First, uh, this for this patient, as rate is high, we had started with the beta blocker metronidazole. Okay, you started beta, beta blocker. blocker. Ah. How much you give? Point two five mg was given. Point two five or two point five? Two point five, sorry, two point five. Ah, you yeah. will have to start with two point five. This is a low mm -hmm. dose. You can five give five mg, depending on the patient's mm -hmm. blood pressure. You can give five mg. Mm -hmm. Then what happened? Uh, the rate has reduced to mm -hmm. 120 or so, uh -huh. and then uh, along with the beta blocker, even we started with the amiodron, giving the stat dose and the infusion. Why you did? Why you gave amiodron? Rate got controlled, no? Rate, I mean both rhythm also to be controlled. Okay, okay. So when will you decide whether rate control and rhythm control is required? When all rate control is required? When the heart rate, when the ventricular rate is uh, more than 120, like in fast ventricular rate, first importance should be given to control the rate of the rate control. Okay. After that, we can uh, cardio version. Uh, so why did you control the rhythm for this patient? He is not a known case of AF, right? Uh, two years history he has a history of having paroxysmal AF two years back during one sort of an infection. What is paroxysmal AF? Having less than three seventy-two hours of. Ah, paroxysmal AF is like new onset new AF. New onset okay. AF and uh, with resolving within the seventy-two hours. Okay. What is persistent AF? Persistent AF is uh, lasting for one week. Ah. Um, lasting for one, one week. One week. Permanent AF. Permanent AF is even uh, lasting more than one week, or even if you cardio uh, given shock also, it's not reversible. Like right back. it is uh, for more than one year. More okay. than one year. Uh, what is long AF? Lone hmm? AF, L O N E, lone. Lone AF means AF without any cause. That is lone AF. Okay. Lone AF. Okay. okay. So uh, this patient, you uh, planned on a rate control and a rhythm control. Okay. okay. So rhythm control in this patient, what you did is correct, but rhythm control is usually done in case of new onset AF. 
then AF which is reversible. So the, he has a reversible condition that is we are suspecting an infection. Exactly. Okay. Then a, a rhythm control should be done in young patients. Young patients, if we are not young patient with AF, if we are not controlling the rhythm, sometimes they can go into structural abnormal mm -hmm. cardiac abnormalities. Mm -hmm. In that case, condition, we can do a rhythm control. Mm -hmm. Or in elderly patient, if there is a risk of heart failure, CHF. Or even after rate control, so you have started beta blocker and control the rate. Even after rate control, if the patient is symptomatic, we can do a rhythm control. Okay. okay. And if suppose we are planning to anticoagulate the patient, but uh, if there is any problem with anticoagulation, we don't want the rate to be irregular mm -hmm. and we don't want an uh, thrombus mm -hmm. or embolic phenomenon. So in that condition also, we will have to uh, rhythm, control. rhythm control. Okay. Mm -hmm. So beta blockers we gave, then you, since it was a new, mm -hmm. a new uh, AF and a reversible cause, uh, you planned on uh, rhythm control. control. Okay. What was given for rhythm control? Amiodron was given. Amiodron was given. Yeah. What was the dose? Amiodron initially given as 150 mg mm. uh, within 10 to 15 minutes and then 1 mg per, mi per minute for uh, 6 hours and then 0.5 mg per minute for rest 18 hours. Okay. That how will you give Amiodron? Uh, dose you have told but how will you give it? So Amiodron, one ampule will contain how much? Mm -hmm. Amiodron 1 ampule will contain how much? 150 mg. Mm -hmm. 150 mg. That is how much? 3 ml. 3 ml. Okay. okay. So, uh, first, you, first dose is 150 mg. Mm -hmm. You are giving us a stat dose. Status. That 3 ml we will be diluting with D5 water and we will be giving it over 15 mm -hmm. to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. That is our stat dose. Mm -hmm. Now, we will have to start the infusion. Suppose your staff doesn't know how to start amiodron infusion, how will you start? Uh, you have it. 1 mg per minute and 0.5 mg per minute. 1 mg per minute due to the same 50 ml. We, we will have to take 6 ampules. 6, 6 ampules plus around 450 to 500 ml D5 water we will have to take. Okay. So we have 1 mg per minute we should be giving for how much? Six hours. Six hours. Yes. Then we will have to give 0 0.5 mg per minute for 18 hours. 18 hours. So approximately it will be coming as 3 mm -hmm. ml per hour and this will be coming as 15 mm -hmm. ml per hour. So 24 hour infusion will be completed. So yeah, this you can calculate based on this one. Each oh, ml will contain okay. how much and like this it will be coming. So that's how we start the amiodron yeah, infusion. infusion. So this patient amiodron infusion also was started. Yes, okay. Mm. Then. Then next, uh, continuing the primary survey. Huh? Huh. After the disability wise, is GCS was full E4, V5, M6 bilaterally reactive pupils are present. Huh? Then in, uh, exposure wise, patient was fibril. So uh, before that, ABG you took, yeah. no? ABG is showing Agents. what? ABG is showing, this patient came with cuff, this thing, ABG is showing elevated yeah, lactate. Right. Why is this lactate elevated? Was he having hypoxia? No. No. Uh, any hypotension? No. no, no, no. You are suspecting yeah. LRT. Is he in sepsis? Might be one of the... Counts are high, you know? 21,000. Okay. CRP is not. He is a known case of, uh, like, uh, other uh, comorbidities, what he was having is type 2 diabetes mellitus and uh, dyslipidemia and cardiac heart failure ma'am mm. and is a known case of CKD. Okay, okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, continue, continue. Yes, these are the adjuncts of this uh, primary survey which had, we had seen that we had found that the WBC counts are and now we are expecting an LRT. LRT with uh, mostly there will be some sort of sepsis coming. Lactate, lactate is elevated, is elevated. then total count is elevated, elevated, then patient is also having AF. So patient is in sepsis, sepsis mostly. mostly. So in this patient before going to secondary survey what all things will should we do? We should uh, start him with uh, I, to, a large IV candle must be placed and mm. we need to start him with fluids mm. along with uh, fluids if there is hypertension, hypertension. Uh, then along, uh, antibiotic first mm. then for the fever paracetamol ah, 
in again in the case of sepsis in the first one hour we should also take blood culture blood culture blood culture to aerobic blood culture should be taken okay. then then initial lactate okay. should be checked and we have to reassess the lactate okay, okay. Mm. then coming to the secondary survey mm. his uh, co- uh, sample history mm. he is uh, not found allergic to any medication is on the medications for type 2 diabetes mellitus and heart failure ma'am mm. and even taking a cosprin for the previous he had one attack of uh, anterior wall mi in 2002 ma'am mm. and uh, Uh, regarding the past uh, history of him past history he had af with uh, fast ventricular rate 2 years ago which was reverted successfully ma'am and uh, is he taking any rate controllers uh, nothing ma'am as of no nothing he is mm. not on any drug medication and uh, what all are the routine medications he is taking diabetic ecosprin uh, uh, other thing is diabetes medication at uh, statins uh, no rate controlling medications or rhythm controlling okay uh, he was on uh, calcium channel blockers okay 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 and after uh, right now uh, uh, the history was he was having fever and cough with expectoration allergic expectoration for the last two days ma'am mm. uh, for which he was brought to the hospital this mm. is the history ma'am and uh, fever was continuous in nature it was responding to taking paracetamol and uh, uh, there is no any evening rise of temperature no weight loss or any other associated symptoms ma'am and cough uh, was uh, uh, having a lowish expectoration and uh, it was continuous cough for the last two days so. okay. and next uh, on examination on a uh, uh, respiratory examination in which there was uh, reduced air entry on the left side ma'am before uh, uh, going to this examination mm-hmm. or you should what you should do you should uh-huh. one more re- one more time reassess because mm-hmm. you gave this all this management mm-hmm. no yes. i was just repeat heart rate and all repeat heart rate was controlled ma'am it came to 80 minutes per minute and mm. uh, it mm. was uh, control and saturation was maintained and uh, there was no any signs of any other abnormality okay, as of okay. now okay mm. any chest pain any signs uh, of ischemia any breathlessness nothing nothing like that as of now and the secondary exam uh, in the examination part uh, like uh, no any signs of any pallor rictus or cyanosis or pedal edema mm. and then uh, on uh, in the systemic examination respiratory examination on in- inspection e- bilateral equivalent a chest rise was present mm-hmm. and on palpation uh, of uh, the chest uh, there is no any dullness or on percussion and mm-hmm. there no dullness anything resonant sounds everywhere on an auscultation there is slight reduced air entry on the left side ma'am mm-hmm. okay yes, ma'am. other systems are within normal limits no abnormality ma'am mm-hmm. then we sent for the chest x ray ma'am in this mm-hmm. patient just was having what is there in the x ray <laughs> right hand left there is homo non homogeneous mm. non homogeneous opacity is it, is it like pneumonia or Pulp. cardiac failure uh, more like uh, pneumonia but centralized so it should be cardiac failure. Uh, yes. there is bilateral uh, non homogeneous yeah. opacity yeah. seen and there is also cephalization yes. of the vessels Vessence. cardiomegaly mm-hmm. okay we cannot mm-hmm. tell uh, since it is an yeah, ap yeah. film okay uh, then what is there looking more like cardiac failure. failure he is a known case of cardiac failure <laughs> past history of cardiac failure mm-hmm. is there okay so looking more like he is having lrt along with cardiac yes, failure yes. okay so if this patient if we uh, if this patient becomes breathless and you know that the heart rate is increasing again how will you manage in this case we can go for synchronized cardio and this, pa- this condition we can go, go for, for if that comes we will have to go for synchronized, synchronized cardio okay okay mm-hmm. then what did you do for this patient chest chest x-ray showing this features yes. then then what antibiotic was started for him ah, okay mm. then what happened to the patient actually the by the time we got the lab reports ma'am mm. in the lab reports was the counts were elevated ma'am count wbc count was 28.3 mm. so is considering like an infection sepsis is that ma'am and uh, his uh, heart enzymes were sent in which anti pro bnp came around 10537 so active cardiac failure, failure is also mm. 
expected in this patient and what about the cardiac enzymes cardiac enzymes uh, is, is, uh, first set of cardiac enzymes were elevated ckmb was 13.13 mm. and even hs octave was also elevated 0.79 mm. creatinine kinase was also elevated 131 and the second set of the cardiac enzymes showed uh, serial uh, cardiac enzymes showed elevation in their values ma'am okay okay so is having a lrt cardiac failure okay. and uh, suspected um, ischemia uh, ischemia also, also okay going, going, going. and after uh, like uh, the started with the antibiotics and uh, after the infusion was started with the amiodarone uh, there was sudden fall in the bp after some uh, 12 hours ma'am for which uh, infusion was withholded mm. and then continued with the tablet doses of amiodarone okay. so uh, initial lactate of the patient was 3.5 no yes, then what happened to the repeat lactate if it lactate was after with the fluids it became 1.2 no are you supposed to give fluids in this patient this no. patient is already in cardiac failure yes not please you should give support Uh, this patient ah uh, this patient we will have to check for the ivc we will have to check for the echo status and then only we should plan on giving iv fluids mm-hmm. so already lactate is elevated maybe because of the sepsis uh, so you are not supposed to, did you repeat the lactate mm-hmm. i tell you you should repeat the lactate mm-hmm. in the first uh, in the sepsis bundle you will have to repeat the lactate mm-hmm. and see uh, mm-hmm. whether it is improving with our treatments or not so uh, we will have to see for the lag- uh, why should we repeat the lactate to check whether if there is increase so ah yeah. increase means if there is increase to 4 will you consider it as significant no, lactate clearance should be no. checked how will you check the lactate clearance the new lactate minus this previous lactate divided with the initial lactate like ah initial lactate minus yes, the new, new lactate, lactate divided by initial, initial lactate. lactate so if there is more than 10 percentage oh, clearance then that is signif- uh, considered as significant Sign- lactate clearance mm-hmm. so you ideally you would have to repeat the lactate and then you will have to uh, plan on that and when patient going to hypotension without giving fluids you will have to directly mm-hmm. go for vasopressors yes. okay how was the echo mm-hmm. echo was showing uh, you are supposed to do echo also <laughs> no you need to know the lv status Uh, we should know why should we know the lv status so that uh, output uh, okay we uh, in order for fluid resuscitation we need to know the lv status along with that we will have to see whether there is any new changes in the uh, lv function so if uh, lv function is also affected that then that means the infection is mm-hmm. affecting the heart also right, so. okay so that also should be checked right. okay and then what happened to the patient it went to Okay. Did the AF revert? Yes, ma'am. I have reverted successfully with the amiodarone. Fevers are back. What was the BP this time? At that time, with the one twenty eighty, like normal BP, it was. Okay. Suppose this patient, uh, yeah, this patient improved symptomatically. Suppose this patient is uh, improved symptomatically, but the AF is persisting. What will you do? AF is persisting. Uh, mm. after even medical uh, then we again try for a uh, electrical cardioversion af is persisting but it is like af with control and clarate af is there yeah. control and clarate no infection no other cause at present all the reversible causes we have treated yeah. how will you discharge this patient we will have to anyway give the, the uh, rate right and rhythm controllers then what then should we, we even is need to add the anti platelets and the thrombolytic agents also to prevent if there is any how will you decide whether you want to start anticoagulants or antiplatelets by doing the chadwas chadwas score okay uh, what is a ch- chadwas score what all things are c h a okay chadwas score okay what is c cardiac cardiac failure cardiac failure okay what is h H is H is hypertension. A A age like greater than seventy five. Age more than seventy five. For which two points? Ah, uh, for which we'll have to give two points. points. Okay. Yeah. Other or one point? One point. Okay. Yeah. D. D di- mm. diabetes. Mm. Diabetes. V. V is any vascular. Vascular event, vascular. like a stroke something. Stroke okay. A. Yeah. 
again age this is time 65 age more than 65 65 here 1.1 1 1 1 mm. mm. stroke actually two points two points oh. okay so, this is sex uh, if it is a well, female we will have to give one, one score two. so depending on that we will have to decide what to give About okay three. suppose the child was score is 1 in male and 2 in female what do you think if it is zero for a male and one for a female nothing 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 one One for a male mm. and two for a female. Then we need to start with the oral. Andy platelets. Andy platelets. Andy platelets. Andy platelets. Yeah. Okay. Two and three. Male, two for two. a male and three for and a female. female. Then we will have to start. Andy coagulation. Andy coagulation. Okay. Before starting Andy coagulation, should we check something else? Is this for this we need to check Hass blood. Hass blood has score blood should be checked. Yeah. Why should we check Hass blood score? to see the risk of giving anticoagulants will that cause ah, a bleeding whether the anticoagulants will cause bleeding, bleeding that we want bleeding. to know yes, yes. so what is has yes. blood yes. score <laughs> has blood score hypertension ah hypertension Tension. and then uh, this is not a age this is abnormal yeah. lft or rft okay lft rft okay. Oh. Mm. Then, this is again male or female. Uh, this is a history of stroke. These things. B. Bleeding tendency. Bleeding. Okay. Bleeding. L. Low platelet. Labial again, or labial again. Suppose this patient is having a F with a chart was score more than two, mm. and if you are planning, But. if this patient is having CLD or any other coagulopathy, then that is again a risk factor mm. for bleeding. No, labial mm. INR E and D is some drugs, mm. uh, drugs, alcohol, these things. Mm. INR E I also forget. Okay, so uh, has blood score. If the has blood score is coming more than two, there is high risk of bleeding. So okay. here in this case, we can't do anything. Ah, so that is uh, so uh, so depending on the risk versus benefit ratio, we'll have to plan on anticoagulants. Anti okay. So, but this patient successfully, we were yeah. able to revert the AF back, and the patient went into normal sinus, sinus rhythm. So, so there is a P wave yeah. here. P P P. Regular. P. So regular rhythm. What is this ST depression signal? Old genes. Maybe because of LVH. Okay. okay. Was it there before? Ah uh, yes. Oh, uh, previous no, previous ischemic changes. changes. Okay. So then, what happened to the patient? He's discharged with antibiotics and anticoagulants. You discharged from the ER? No, okay. You admitted, 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 and then discharged, discharged when patient improved. Okay. Thank you.